In this video, 5 mistakes to avoid in freediving. Let's get rid of those bad habits. Coming up. Alright guys, this is a video about bad habits in freediving. It's not so much about technical mistakes, it's more about things that people do they shouldn't actually be doing. If you're new to this channel, my name is Gert Leroy, helping you master freediving. And honestly, when I started freediving, my life has simply changed for the better. Freediving gave me a space, a way to relax my mind and let go of all my tension. I have found my peace. And now I want you to find your peace through the practicing of freediving. So if you like the idea, consider subscribing and hit the notification bell. Mistake number one, diving alone. Now, when you follow a freediving course, your instructor will probably tell you that the rule number one in freediving is to always look cool. Nah, just joking. Never dive alone, that's the rule number one. And why is that? To give you a full answer to this, let me start by telling you something about safety. In free diving, you always dive with a safety diver. So the safety diver is your buddy, is another diver who accompanies you on the last part of your dive. So let's say you do a 20 meter dive, then this uh, safety diver will accompany you on the last 10 meters. So you go down, you turn, you come back up, and then your safety diver who is still at the surface goes down as well. And you meet, each other somewhere halfway which would be 10 meters and then both would go up at the same time. The reason of this is because your safety diver wants to see if you are okay. So he or she is gonna look for signs of hypoxia. Hypoxia means extreme low levels of oxygen. How do you see someone is hypoxic? First of all, the eyes. When the diver has open, wide, scared eyes, then you know something is wrong. This is a sign of hypoxia. Another sign is uncoordinated movements. If the technique of your diver is suddenly all over the place, then you know something is wrong. This is a sign of hypoxia. Or if your diver would suddenly exhale underwater, which is something as a beginner freediver you never do, then you know that this is also a sign of hypoxia because you're supposed to keep all the air in. So if there is a sudden uncontrolled exhalation, your diver is in trouble. And another way you can see your diver is hypoxic is when the lips are blue. Now underwater that is a little bit more difficult to see, but when your diver surfaces, holds on to the buoy and is ready to do the recovery breath, when you see the lips are blue, then you definitely know, oh, he or she is hypoxic and you must be super alert. So the problem with hypoxia is that it easily progresses into the next stage, which could be either LMC or blackout. LMC means loss of motor control. You're still conscious as a diver, but you can't really control your movements anymore. So it looks a bit like you're shaking, like you're uncontrollably moving your body. And that's why they also call it samba, like the Brazilian dance. <laughs> LMC can also evolve into a blackout or hypoxia can directly evolve into a blackout and when you have a blackout you're losing consciousness so you don't know anymore what happens. When this happens it usually happens on the last couple of meters in a dive and that's why we call it a shallow water blackout. It can also happen on the surface. Initially you think it's gonna be all right but a couple of seconds later he or she still blacks out. As a safety diver you always have to be very alert at that moment. If an LMC happens or a blackout then the safety diver is obviously going to have to rescue the diver so we call this a rescue if it is on a shallow water blackout then the rescue diver is going to grab the diver by the chin and pull him or her back up to the surface and if it's an LMC on the surface then it's enough to hold your diver so he or she cannot fall back into the water and that's why you should never dive alone you should always dive with a buddy a skilled free diver who knows how to perform a rescue in case something goes wrong he or she can save your life now there are also other reasons why you should never dive alone and that's because of confidence. And this is something that a lot of freedivers uh, overlook. Uh, I did a coaching session with a spear fisherman and after like 10 minutes of talking, I asked him, who are you diving with? And then he kind of, yeah, admitted he was diving alone. So I didn't know that in the beginning of the conversation. Listen guys, if you're diving alone, apart from the whole safety issue, you're simply not feeling confident because you know if something happens, no one will save you. So this has a huge mental impact on you. If you have someone you can trust in, if you're diving with a team then that is so much more relaxing and you're feeling so much more confident and the whole dive will feel so much better mistake number two carrying too much weight now this is a mistake that
that lots of beginners make as well. They think, probably because they've seen scuba diving, that in free diving you have to use a lot of weight. Using a lot of weight can be a dangerous thing. Imagine you're going down, you're turning, and then you have to swim back up with too much weight and you weren't prepared for this. You don't know how it feels like to come back up with so much weight on you. I mean, you can totally miscalculate a dive just by putting on too much weight. Yes, going down will be easy, but remember, you still have to go back up. Now, there's also another reason why beginner freedivers sometimes use too much weight, and that is the lack of technique on their duck dive. If your duck dive is not efficient, then it's gonna be difficult to go under the water, so if you use more weights, it's obviously easier. So instead of putting more weights, you should spend time on making your duck dive better. And if you're not familiar with the duck dive, I have made a video about this, how to duck dive in one minute. I'll link it up in the cards here and in the description down below. So how do you know how much weight you should use? Well, we perform a buoyancy check at 10 meters depth. So a buoyancy check is a check to see if you're wearing the correct amount of weight at 10 meters depth. So you shouldn't sink at 10 meters and you shouldn't go up. Now the amount of weights you're using depends on the water you're diving in. Now you might be saying water, I mean, what's the difference? Well, we have salt water and we have fresh water. In salt water, there is obviously salt and the salt is kind of keeping you more towards the surface. So in salt water, you will not sink as fast in fresh water. For instance, Nemo 33 in Belgium has fresh water and you sink way faster there than in ocean water. So that's why in fresh water, you need less weight than in salt water. Also, the thickness of your wetsuit plays a role. The thicker your wetsuit, the more buoyant you are. So the thicker your wetsuit, the more you have to compensate the buoyancy of that wetsuit, so you're gonna use more weights. If you have a very thin wetsuit, like when you're diving in, in the Philippines, very warm water, you don't need that much weight. If you're diving in very cold water and you're wearing, let's say, a 7 millimeter wetsuit, then you'll be using more weights. Mistake number three, diving with a snorkel in your mouth. In free diving, we don't hold the snorkel in the mouth when we're diving. Why is that? So first of all, the snorkel is an extension of your airways. It's like inviting the water to come in. So obviously you don't want that. Second, when you have this snorkel here on the side of your face, it's always like, slapping against your face, it's annoying you, it's not hydrodynamic. But most of all, when you're diving and you turn and you come back up, what is the first thing you wanna do when you come back up to the surface? You wanna breathe, of course. Now, if you have this snorkel in your mouth, the snorkel is full of water. So instead of breathing, the first thing you have to do is purge the snorkel. You have to blow all the water that is in the snorkel out and then you can breathe. That's not a situation you wanna be in, right? Imagine your dive was challenging. Imagine you were like almost on the edge and then you desperately need to breathe and then first you have to blow all this water out of your snorkel. Mistake number four, not using a float. Now we also call this a buoy. Usually it's a yellow or red. Sometimes we put a flag on top of it. So this is all for safety. So when you're diving, you're probably not alone there. Boats might be passing by. So imagine you just come up from a dive and a boat is coming towards your way. The boat will never see you. I mean, this is a terrible situation and it happens, you know. So if you have a float, then that is a sign, a warning sign to the boat. Hey, something is going on here. There are divers here. And another reason, this well on a float is attached a rope and on the rope at the bottom is the bottom weight so if you're diving and at a sudden moment you get stressed you get anxious you can always pull yourself back up on the rope so diving with a float and a rope adds up to your safety also, sometimes it might happen that you lose direction. Sometimes, uh, I mean, when you're underwater, it's simply not easy to know what is up, what is down, what is left, what is right. I'm sure you've been in this situation before if you've done a free diving course. So if you have this rope in front of you, it's so much easier to find direction. And if you find direction, you find tranquility, you find relaxation. There is nothing more frightening than to be underwater and losing direction. I mean, where am I? Should I go left? Should I go right? And the last reason in between dives, you can hold on to the buoy and simply relax more. Mistake number five, talking right after surfacing. And this is something that happens a lot with students. And I mean, I can't stress enough to them. I mean, guys, don't talk when you just surface. You gotta do your recovery breath first. So you've been diving, you've been holding your breath. So your body is low on oxygen. So the first thing your body needs when you come up is breathe, is getting oxygen in. What do some students do? They start talking, they start wasting energy, wasting 
getting oxygen is the opposite of what their body wants. Now I do understand you want to talk right after a dive. Because you want to tell me what, what went on, right? So maybe your ear got stuck, maybe you got cramps in your legs, maybe the fin come loose. And because you turned and you went back up, you want to explain me right after your dive, this is what happened and this is why I decided to turn and come back up. As an instructor, whether that is me or someone else, we know all these things. I mean, you're not our first student, right? So you don't have to tell us this, we know already. So first you do your recovery breaths, five breaths, five times, and then you can start talking, you can tell us everything that happened underwater, but not before the recovery breath. That's it guys, peace in every breath.